Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 NFL team preview. We're taking a look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Jags this upcoming season. The quarterback position for the Jaguars is by far the biggest question mark heading into the 2013 season. It's essentially a two-man race between Blaine Gabbert and Chad Henney. In my honest opinion, both guys would be better considered as solid backup options. The fact that no quarterback was selected in the draft, especially since Geno Smith was still on the board in the second round, was even more telling. It's saying that this regime and organization believes in both players for at least this season. And there's some talent on this Jags offense, but in order for them to make some noise in this division, they're going to have to get some consistency from the quarterback position. Maybe for Gabber, you cater to his skill set and implement a lot of what he did at Missouri, while Henny will do a fine job operating off play action. At any rate, this is a major concern for the Jags moving forward. Maurice Jones-Drew is coming back at 100%, and that's a great thing for this offense. Jones-Drew is one of the top backs in the league that possesses that unique blend of tough inside running, burst, and receiving skills, and that makes him such a dangerous player to game plan against. Backing him up is a host of options vying for that number two spot, but two guys stand out to me more so than others, and that's Justin Forsett and Denar Robinson. Forsett is a shifty player that is coming over from the Houston Texans and is a pretty good special teams guy, while Robinson is the wild card. Drafted out of Michigan, Robinson was one of the most electrifying players in college football. The Jags plan to use him in the backfield, although I think he's better suited to play wide receiver, and if you're going to use him as a runner, then having him in the shotgun will be your best bet. Either way, he's going to add some sizzles to that Jags offense. And at the fullback spot, gone is longtime Jaguar Greg Jones, but I'm a big fan of undrafted rookie free agent Lonnie Pryor out of Florida State. Big fan of his ability and what he could bring to the table, not only as a lead blocker, but also as a runner. His game reminds me so much of Larry Sanders that used to play for the Arizona Cardinals. Having guys like Pryor, Robinson, and Jones Drew does give the Jaguars some excitement and some options in the running game. Last year's first round pick, Justin Blackman, started to come along fine toward the end of the season and was building momentum heading into this year as a player primed for a breakout year until he suffered a setback in the offseason, getting suspended for the first four games of the season. And Blackman is a guy that is excellent after the catch, and they're going to miss him. But once he gets back on the field, there's no doubt he'll pick up right where he left off at the end of last season. But in the interim, the Jags have to adjust. Cecil Shorts had an outstanding year last season, catching 55 passes for over 900 yards at a healthy 17.8 yards a catch. He'll start the season as the number one guy. Opposite of him will be two veteran guys in Muhammad Massaquai, who came over in free agency, and Jordan Shipley. You can also see the Jags go with two younger players in Denar Robinson, who can also play wide out, and A. Sanders, who was drafted in the fourth round out of South Carolina. And he's better suited to play in the slot. And with this quickness and agility, he'll do a lot of damage underneath. I also like Taylor Price, whom they signed as a free agent. Price was an accomplished receiver coming out of Ohio, but never really got an opportunity with the Patriots as he battled injuries. He could be a sleeper option, in my opinion. At the tight end position, there's Mercedes. Lewis, who's one of the better tight ends in the league and already a pretty good run blocker. Lewis just needs more opportunities in a passing game, and he may get that look since Blackman is out for the first quarter of the season. And there's a lack of depth behind Lewis, but keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Ryan Odden out of San Jose State, one of my favorite prospects in college football. He's also a pretty good blocker with the athleticism to open it up in the passing game. I think he'll make the roster and be that number two tight end H-back type of player for this offense. I think the offensive line will be vastly improved this season as they're getting guys back at 100%, especially on the interior. Guards Will Rackley and Uche Nueri both battled injuries last year with Rackley missing the entire season. He's a pretty good guard and his return means a lot to this offense. Center Brad Meeser is entering his 14th season as the man in the middle and is a very productive player. I also like the depth behind them with last year's undrafted rookie free agent Mike Bruce out of Ohio State who looks to be the heir apparent after being considered one of the best centers in college football. Out on the edges, you have Eugene Monroe, who's a solid player in his own right. He'll hold down the left tackle spot and did a fine job of that last season. And 2013 first-round pick Luke Joko out of Texas A&M will start at the right tackle spot. Joko was arguably the, one of the premier players in college football last season, regardless of position. There's also some quality depth with players like Austin Patzer, who was drafted by the Edmonton Eskimos in the CFL, and Jason Spitz, who's returning from injury. Whomever is back there at quarterback will have the benefit of playing behind what I think is a very good offensive front.
This is another unit for the Jags that could use a boost in production. New head coach Gus Bradley is a defensive mind that comes over from the Seattle Seahawks, so expect to see some of the elements that the Seahawks defense ran last season with the Jaguars. For example, former first-round pick defensive tackle Tyson Alulu will see some time at defensive end in an effort to maximize his talents. And he need both Jason Babin and Jeremy Minshew to get back to their pass rushing ways. Both guys are capable. It's all about effort and want to. The wild card in the mix is last year's second round pick, Andre Branch out of Clemson. Branch has the best athletic gifts out of any of the defensive linemen. It's just about him realizing and reaching that potential. On the inside, look for free agent signing Roy Miller coming from Tampa Bay and send Derek Marks to start at defensive tackle. Depth is a concern on the interior, which is why you'll see a Lulu go back and forth from D into D tackle. And if 2010 third round pick DeAnthony Smith can stay healthy, he has a chance to be a factor and see significant minutes. The most important statistic that must improve this year for the Jags in order to have this defense be a lot better is the 141 rushing yards that was given up last season per game. That ranked 30th in the league. That can't happen in 2013. A thin linebacking core is led by middle linebacker Paul Puzlesny, who was tops on the team in tackles with 139. Puzlesny is one pretty good football player that continues to not get the notoriety despite making plays all over the football field. There's little to no depth behind him, and that leaves the door open for undrafted rookie free agent Mike Zimmer out of Illinois State to make the roster, which isn't a bad thing as Zimmer is in the mold of Puzlesny as he was a highly productive player for the Redbirds. On the outside, the Jags signed Geno Hayes in free agency, and he's a guy that brings a lot of speed and athleticism to the position. And Russell Allen started his career as an undrafted free agent and now has become a starter because of his outstanding play. Last season, Allen finished second on the team in tackles with 131. Julian Stamper was also a pleasant surprise last year as he made the roster as an undrafted free agent and starting six games. He'll back up Allen, but will definitely see a lot more playing time this year. The youth movement is in full effect for the Jaguars in the secondary. Gone is longtime Jag Rasheed Mathis, who was a very good player for Jacksonville throughout his career, and cornerback Derek Cox is also gone. The new starters look like it will be free agent signees Marcus Trufant and Allen Ball, both competing for one spot with rookie third-round pick Dwayne Gratz out of UConn competing for the other. Trufant and Ball are two vets, and I expect Ball to win that spot, and Gratz was one of the better corners in the country last season for the Huskies. He's a tall and physical player that definitely has the ball skills. In the slot, you can see second-year player Mike Harris, whom they drafted last season out of Florida State. And it makes sense for the Jags to go young because Bradley can mold these guys into what he wants them to be. At the safety spot, they drafted Jonathan Cyprian out of Florida International to start at the strong safety position. And he's a guy that shows pretty good range, so he'll be able to match up versus tight ends in a passing game. Free safety Dwight Lowry was the starter last year, and I've always been a fan of his game because he's a guy that started his career as a corner and was solid there then move to safety where he now gives you flexibility in your defense to be able to match up man-to-man -man versus wide receivers. So you can see why Bradley wanted to keep him on this roster. The Jags drafted Josh Evans out of Florida, who's also in the same mold as Lowry, a safety that has the ability to cover, and Evans was considered by most to be a sleeper. And they still have Chris Przinski on the back end providing depth. Jags are also pretty solid in the special teams department with two kickers, Josh Scobie, an outstanding kicker, 10-year vet out of Louisiana Tech, and he's one of the league's best kickers last year, went 25 or 28 on his field goal attempts, and a lot of people mocked the pick last season when he took Brian Anger in the third round, the punter out of Cal, but he is already one of the better punters in the league and was a big part to their defensive success as far as pinning teams deep on the back end. And when we look at the return game, there's a host of guys that can help in that position. You have Justin Forsett. You also have Denard Robinson. So I think the Jags will find in the return game, there's options for these guys to be successful. Let's take a look at what the Jaguars have on the roster, versatility and depth in the backfield. I'm a big fan of Jones Drew. I think he's one of the better running backs in the league. They also have Forsett and what they do with Denard Robinson. And two, an excellent kicking game, both as a place kicker and field goals, as well as in the punt department. And they have an underrated offensive line. I think they're going to be a lot better this season now that they've added Joko and guys are back 100%. Now, on the flip side, let's take a look at what the Jaguars lack. Number one, competent quarterback play. That could hinder this team from getting to where they want to be. Number two, a consistent pass rush. A lot of times you'll see sometimes in a game or maybe on a series they can get out to the quarterback, then they disappear. They have to be consistent and depth at the wide receiver and linebacker positions.
Reason for optimism for the Jaguars, number one, you have a new head coach who's a defensive-minded guy, which means the running game is going to be a focal point. That's why they had to build on the offensive line so he could keep that game close, and the defense will get better this year because of Gus Bradley. The cause for concern would be the limited passing attack of the Jaguars, and that's a combination of the lack of depth at the wide receiver position and also not addressing the quarterback position in a draft. That could come back to haunt these guys this season. The road to the Super Bowl for the Jaguars goes as follows. Number one, they get consistent, good play from the QB spot. Remember, they don't have to be great. They just can't be terrible. Number two, defense has to find its swagger. There are some pieces here for this team to be successful. I like Puzz Lusney. I like what they have at the defensive end position. They just have to find that swagger, get consistent, and get after the quarterback. And it's going to help out the back end. And three, they always have to win the special teams battle in every game. Remember, in football, is three facets. Offense, defense, special teams. If you're able to win two out of the three, you're setting yourself up for a pretty good season. I have the Jaguars finishing fourth in the AFC South. This team will be a lot better defensively. You won't see a team that ranks last in every statistical category. I think they'll be a lot better. Gus Bradley will do a good job on that side of the ball. But offensively, there's still a lot of questions, in particular the skill position and, more importantly, the quarterback position. If they can't solve that, this team will always struggle to put points on the board. And also want to give a huge shout-out to Jaguar Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.